and welcome to the Celtic Huddle Podcast. I'm Mark Wilson. I'm joined today by the Celtic legends Simon Donnelly and Frank McAvenny. Murdo McLeod has been rested this week. Unfortunately for him, it's through popular demand. <laughs> <laughs> so he's taking a wee spell on the sidelines. But a brand new podcast every week and we'll take you behind the scenes and in-depth on all things Celtic. Today, guys, we've got an absolute cracker for you. We've got an exclusive interview with Johan Mial, but it's not to be missed. I was on the phone earlier with him having a wee chat. He seems up for it. Loads to say about what's happening at Celtic just now. So, big Dolph Lundgren, be flexing his, his muscles. Doesn't he pull any punches? Um, I've got to say that when I say that, it's the hardest working coach I've Aye. ever seen in my life. He was in, he was in the gym uh, triple the time any players were when I was there the last guy to leave the gym so that's why he's in good shape right. and you'll see that later on if you tune into the video um, so right well first of all thanks for all the great feedback we got last week keep it coming much appreciated I uh, want to say something last huh? week thanks very much for you know it was um, my missus says thanks very much because I've had a problem sleeping and, uh, <laughs> yeah, ah, very nice. <laughs> oh, I was, I was slept like a baby. It was great. Ah, oh, well. Tuned in. Thanks for that, Frank. Thanks. Uh, keep that. Keep that positive feedback coming in. Everybody that's listening. <laughs> okay, talking about positives. On to Sunday's one then, because it's been a mixed bag this week, guys. A couple of four-one results, one negative, one positive. So, on the back of that four-one defeat to Sparta Prague, must-win game for Celtic. You got to say going to Fir Park. Players delivered with a four-one victory. Um, Frank, let's well, let's be honest. Was that a make or break game this early in the season for Neil Lennon? I think it was a so so important. You don't want it, you know the challenge from across the city. You don't want him to get any further away, um, and especially because the way they've been playing. But let see me look at the games. Mark. It's really hard games, you know that, that Celtic had. I mean, I know Sparta come in six players missing apparently. You know. <laughs> It must be one hell of a team mm. <laughs> if they if they all if they're all better than that Aye. that mob coming through. I think for now on that will be the team that's going forward because they were. I thought they were magnificent. Yes, we let them play, but I thought that that team was was different class on the day. So, um, it was, I must win. I just you know I go back to <coughs> I look at Scott Brown and the team talk was. I, I mean, I wouldn't imagine he would do the team talks. You know, in the huddle, every game, the, some, the camera got in amongst that. And, uh, it was fiery. It was you fiery, could see, you know, and yeah, what it you meant could to see him. what it meant to him. I, I just, I've said it before, I don't know if the players all get this 10 in a row. And I hope that, you know, some inspirational talk for, for Lenny and for, Neil, uh, for Bruni would, would, would get them over, over it because it, it's a massive season. And yeah. sometimes I look at players and go, do you really know what it is, you know? And, I think Lenny will sort it out. I mean, I do it whether he's got to change his, ta his stance on being nice to him because I know it's a different it's a different game now and mm. people get called dinosaurs and that now if you start shouting at people. But sometimes you need that. I don't care who you are and I don't care what generation is. Sometimes you need that kick up the backside. Yeah. Sometimes you need an arm put around you and that's what the manager's job is. And well, if there's guys who don't know or understand what it means, they've certainly got the two right guys <coughs> and Scott Brown and, yeah. and Neil Lennon who yeah. knows what the club's about, who, who know the significance of this season. But that, Sid, what what do you think of that? Do you think the board would have would have pulled the trigger had Celtic dropped points? I mean, even, uh, never mind lose, do you think if, if they drew, it would have been enough after the week? I don't think, in terms of Lenny's job, Yeah. no, I don't, I don't think that they'd have moved that soon, but again... Every game is a must win at the moment for Celtic. You know, Rangers have got the points on the board, albeit we've got two games in hand, I believe. We, we have to keep winning. We have to keep winning, especially on the back of the European disappointment. I mean, we sat here last week and I thought we've turned a corner, real decent result, semi final, shown a wee bit of form. I thought we'll get into a Sparta game. I, t I tip Celtic as favourites. Mm -hmm. But uh, to go in 2 0 behind it, the break and get a goal back just into the second half again I think you believe right we're going to kick on again here but as Maka says Sparta were very good mm -hmm. you know on the counter attack very quick so to get into the game on Sunday on the back of that result and everything that comes with it huge pressure again yeah. and they've, they've came up trumps they've came up trumps but that, that is Celtic though see mm. when we played that that was Celtic every Sunday game mm -hmm. and for me personally going in when Rangers had played on the Saturday and won the pressure was huge yeah. and we just got on with it and dealt with it yeah. I mean do you think because 
There was always a, a, a thought you know or a, a, a thing, a ranger slipping up. There, there's no, yeah. We can't hide it. They, they weren't good enough over yes. the, the piece in the last few years. See, now they've got a team. Celtic players have to deal with the pressure that we were under. We, well, we you played, in particular, we said. Played in yeah. We played in an era, you guys as well as me, when if you drop points, it could have won the league for Rangers because yeah. yeah. it was that, that close. I'm going to be honest, this is the first year that Rangers, I mean, forget about last year up to Christmas, this is the first year I, I'm looking and saying, this is a challenge. Yeah. And it's the first time the boys have been asked to step up. Yeah. Now, you're finding out a lot about these players because it's all right when you're you're so far in front of every other team and you're stroking the ball about. But this is when you become a Celtic player, when when the pressure's on you. I agree. You know? yeah. I agree. That's so, why you're brought to the yeah. club, I think. Yeah. Because, you know, never your playing ability is one thing, but your consistency... And how you deal with, with pressure situations. I think they've had it easy because there's no been a pressure. Yeah. I really do. No, well, uh, of course, you have to step up. But the, the man always gets the fall as the manager. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think it's fair that he's under pressure almost every single day of the week? I, I, I tend to switch on the TV or the radio mm-hmm. now, and every presser he's doing, he's getting asked about <laughs> everything negative yeah. and nothing positive. You know, the, the, the 4 1 1 at the weekend. I've been to Fur Park, know how hard it is to go there and win. <laughs> Very rarely did I win 4-1. Yeah, but he's still result. getting asked about yeah. negative things. Do you think it's fair? No, it's definitely not fair. But listen, <laughs> the press and the media, I just want Lenny to say something. Controversial. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> and that's what, that's what it's for. Because, we, you know, we've all, there's certain people out there that the, the press will want to talk to because they're liable to say something stupid, you know, and I put myself in that category as well. So <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I think Lenny is that. It's what they do. They're waiting They're waiting on coming out with a headline. He's right to come out yeah, sometimes. And, and when he thinks mm-hmm. it's wrong, unjust, unjust he's yeah. right to come out. Yeah. But equally so against Sparta. Mm-hmm. When somebody asked him, yeah. what do you say? And he says, well, criticism is justified. I think he's a pretty... Uh, yeah. I think he's the stuff with the Elianusi as well. I mean, yeah. The cameras get focused in on him. 4-1. See, if, if Celtic are winning, that's not an issue. No. But they're down 4-1, mm. and all of a sudden he's got a phone in his hand. Yeah. And you could see Lenny reaction when he's... When he's, when he's asked about, about it. You know, he was raging. But in full credit to him, man management comes into it there because he could get in there... Lose the head and El Yunusi might no feature, but yeah. El Yunusi was in the team at the weekend and scores the three goals. So for me, that was a that was a good, good payback, move. Good payback. Good move. Yeah. He's a good professional. I mean, I was I was shocked when to the fact that he had to put the mobile with him. But how did he have the how phone? Did they have it? <laughs> I mean, listen, not every player goes out with a big puff coat on. I know. So the ones that are playing don't get them. That was a, so that that was a mystery to me. I couldn't must, believe. I didn't sock the full I, game. We just didn't see it. I wonder if he said to the guy, "Look, I'm coming off. Go and get my phone." From me. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the team with man management and he Neil, it was a big yeah. decision to play him, and he made a couple other big decisions. I thought, you know, mm-hmm. brave decisions. I thought right decisions. He left Edward and, and Duffy. Shane Duffy. Yeah. What do you think? You think that was no, right? I, right I, call? Yeah, I'm a, I'm yeah. you, Willow. I think I think Shane Duffy has come in. And it's been a difficult start to his Celtic career. He's had a couple of goals early on, and then his form hasn't been particularly good. He's came under a lot of criticism. And similar to the goalkeeper a couple of weeks ago, I know the keeper allegedly had an injury. I think taking him out of the team for a wee bit, just taking him away from you know the the main uh, back four there, let him have a watch from the side, assess the situation, and then get back in. I think it was a good decision. I think odds and Edward, his form has been nowhere near last season mm-hmm. so yeah I think the, the two decisions at the weekend you look at the result you know it's been proven right good thing about Edward as he comes on and he has a contribution of some yes. sort you yeah. know he, he sets up the goal okay he doesn't he score but I think strikers like well you, you guys will know <coughs> strikers you need to know if you certainly did it in two or three games in a row yeah. there's got yeah. to be a guy there to, well, th- to listen, take their place listen I'm, I'm a great believer in it's not about scoring goals being a striker you know it's, you can do so much for your team Mm-hmm. You know, but you're just your work rate putting people under pressure. Don't give people the time to make that perfect pass. Mm. You know, put them under pressure. You know, and just do your work because you're having a bad game. You can still put a shift. You can in. still yeah. contribute. I think that's what something that the fans are saying. Well, Edward's not doing it. He's yeah. not doing that. You know, he's he's trying to maybe try trying too hard to try to beat three and four men at the weekend. And looks like you know, that, doesn't it? And um. he's maybe trying too hard. And uh, that's the worst thing you can do as a striker. Yeah. Well, one guy has leading the line. Well, or just behind the line, but he's leading the goal scoring charts as El Yunusi. Yeah, I mean, his yeah. hat trick on Sunday it repays the manager's faith in him. Of course, um, of course. We, we we spoke a bit to the players, 
you know, O'Neill Lennon, a big performance, and he was he was one, I guess, mm-hmm. just to quiet the critics. But what do you make his hat trick? I mean, I thought he was very honest all week when he get caught when he get caight on the phone. He says, "Look, I shouldn't have done it." He says, oh, "But I was." Leave it checking the results, you know. I'm you would have said that as well. Ah, yeah, I was checking know. results, I was, honest. I'd have, I'd have said some stupid. Like, I was checking the results because I bet on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have got myself ready. And both teams to score on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd have said some that. Like, but listen, he, he says I accept the responsibility. He says I, I accept whatever the manager Aye. and the captain yeah. deems. Uh-huh. I mean, it's the best response. Thought, it's the best he's, response. He's done it. He's done it great. He's but done his it goals, it and then he can back score three goals. Aye, man. See the way he that plays a winger. Uh-huh. I mean, very rarely have I seen him ever run someday and go no, down the outside. No, no. But the amount of goals I'm seeing, yeah. he comes that far on the pitch and he scores either around the penalty mm. spot or he scores headers like he did yeah. the other day. I mean, incredible. Yeah, he's incredible. just a different kind of winger yeah. than a James Forrest. Say. He, of course, yes. He, he occupies that um, that middle bit of the box, almost like a second striker. So, I mean, he's... He, he's Sometimes he's, it doesn't work, though, Matt. Sometimes we, I, I prefer him to go in and... As a team, you know who to, who to go in the box. I mean, sometimes we, we tend to run in. And I, I thought McGregor at the weekend sort of summed it up. And he says, well, no, a team... You know, we've got to... We cannot play centre forward. Mm-hmm. And I thought... You know, there's too many players. Who's he having a go at then? Well, I don't know. It's a personal thing, isn't it? I think he's having a go. Can it be the centre forward? Must no, be one of the three in front of him. It's one of them. You know, I think he's he's talking about maybe people, you know, not going back, not defending. I, I think it might have been a wee dig because he's captain. That's the way maybe he's getting his point across. Right. And it was, and I got it. I would have been saying, well, what, if it was me and the team, I'd have got that in the view. I'd have said, right, and take it on board and, and move on. Yeah. You know? Okay. I mean, a lot of work still to be done. Mm. Said though. I mean, good result. Um. You know, four one, but it's going to keep coming unless Celtic go on a run. Is it not? Unless they go maybe four or five domestic games, they've, they've got to find that run. They've got to find that run. I thought, as I say, going back to the European game in the semi final, I thought, right, we're going to get a wee bit of momentum here. Then you take the setback of of Sparta game uh, on Thursday night, but they bounce back again. But it, it's going to take that because Rangers at the moment don't look as if they're going anywhere. No, you no. Know, another. Uh, Performance at the weekend eight 0 against Hamilton. So Celtic just need to keep winning at the moment. Uh, keep domestically. Domestic. I mean, Europe's great, but uh, the results in Europe they're only paramount. Are they? Performances no. probably. Uh, yeah. I th- Celtic, I think you want Celtic them to be fans, better. Celtic fans. I mean, listen, the Celtic fans. They want a Champions League. They want a lot more than what they can get. Being realistic, mm-hmm. but they should expect them to give a good good account of themselves in the Europa League. Yeah. They yeah. should. I mean, listen, I don't. They, there's teams well under us that's, that's you know get doing a lot better. Yeah, so but even uh, in even on that point, I mean, Europa League, you go away in France yeah. and have a great performance. Then at home against the the worst ranked team in the group, you have a terrible performance, and it's sort of been like that domestically. Yeah. Why uh, why do you think there's so much inconsistency and in, in the side this season? <coughs> I think he's mixed and matched the team, isn't he? I think it's um, I don't think it's been as fluent. You know, I think Julian and, and I are. We're getting criticised as a you know as a pairing, and I mean I've done it myself. Mm-hmm. But sometimes <laughs> you know you, you think, well, if they two they two are better than this, yeah. So he's got to get that right. Julian's no far away for about here. Yeah. Um, so right. he but it's, a, co- it's a combination of things. You know you, what, but, he's, but he's a he's a he. Beaton's not a centre half. Said I mean no. he's not. He's a midfield player doing a centre half job. Same as Chris Sutton done for years. We played in Europe. I think he's a centre half now. I think he is now, but he's a midfield player playing a centre half. So I don't think he's good. Sometimes tactically, tactically, time set. Maybe not aggressive. Aware, aye. And um, I think Julian, uh, although he gets pushed about the physical aspect with, with dikes and people like that, it's not very often. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. um, so. And he, he's a proper centre half. So I think Beaton will be a centre half. Yeah, but I just don't think he's got he's got that much experience to to go in this such an important year. I yeah. wouldn't be happy. Would be to honest, my centre half for the rest of the season, you know. Well, that leads us on nicely because a centre half coming up, a, a top centre half, Johan Mialbi interview, just round the corner. And straight after that, we've got some stories, some fun stories about the guys' <laughs> trips from European uh, European trips abroad. So that will be fun. Now, I'm delighted to say we are joined by Johan Mialbi, a true legend of the club. Johan, thanks for joining us on the Celtic Huddle podcast. How are you doing? Pleasure, Mark. You're great to see you and hear you. I'm actually not too bad uh, after hernia surgery. Good, good, good to hear. Well, I tell you what, 
you know, we'll play, we'll play your advert for your gin with First Star. First Star Legends Gin, Premier Blend. Smooth, beautiful, classy, and blonde. And the gin is not bad either. You're looking, you're looking no ba- too bad there. You're looking fit enough in that. Tell us about that. You don't love yourself <laughs> that, that much in it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Still using that old Swedish no, charm to punch in. Ah, <laughs> oh, exactly. I thought that was quite cheesy there. But uh, it, it is for good. Good fun. Yeah. Bern Franks, number 35, Bern no. Franks. No. Yeah. I mean, definitely. You can it is. Look at the picture. It's a great <laughs> oh, picture. <I> <laughs> but, uh, turn that round, turn that round. We didn't see it. That's yeah. the one. My ah, baby. look at that there. Ah. My, my picture's a good no, one. Actually, on. It looks as if I've just walked out of a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Perfect, Mark. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> no, it looks good, no, you but, on. Uh, yeah. It's actually, it's actually... You, it's a very nice gin. Uh, I've tried it. It's it is smooth and it's great taste of apple and rhubarb when it comes to mine. Wow! And uh, yeah. uh, I, I'm quite sure like five a day. the other three <laughs> gins are very good, but mine's are defes- defensively the strongest. Ah, <laughs> very go. nice, very go. nice. Well, listen, leads <laughs> us on nicely, <laughs> Johan, to football matters, and. Uh, Yes. Look, it's been a big week for Celtic. What do you make of the Celtic results and performances this season? Uh, no, I think uh, uh, performance-wise, we have definitely not been uh, as strong as obviously the end of last season. Uh, 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 I do think it's no need to panic yet. Uh, because, uh, yes, I, I can see that they're way, way too open defensively. The balance is not really right all the time. But at the same time, uh, a lot of the the really, really strong players like Edward, Julian, you know, they've had their problems and they've not been in the team, you know, all season. So, so we, we need to give it a wee bit of time. But but it was a very important uh, victory uh, against Mount Motherwell. Yeah, and, and, and on that, do you think, you know, the Celtic players owed... Neil, that performance, I mean, there's so much a manager can do, I suppose, but when the players go across yeah. the line, they need to perform. Do you think that was a big one for them? That's the way it is at the club at Celtic. I think uh, sometimes nowadays uh, people think it's like PlayStation if you're a manager. That's not the way it is. You have a game plan. You obviously ask the players to, to uh, do certain things, but when you cross the white line, the players themselves, they need to gear themselves up. They need to perform. They know what to do. And and and, and I know the, the club and the team is handicapped by new supporters being in there. But still, you know, you, you need to really show that that the, the jersey and the badge means everything to you. Yeah. Do you think that's a big thing, Johan? The, the supporters not being in. Yep. Do, you, do you think that's affected some of the players who, who maybe thrive on on? 60,000, you know, you think they're they're being affected by I the, do, the damp atmosphere? Yeah, uh, because, you know, it, when, when you get used to it, it is the best place in the world. Uh, and uh, I know, I know some places, they don't, they don't really love the situation when the pressure is on, uh, because, you know, you know, you know, Celtic is, is a pressure boiler, you know, you need to perform. You need to win things. Otherwise, you won't be long lived. And and uh, I think a lot of these players, you know, they, they miss the supporters because you can see every game I watch on telly nowadays, even if it's the Premiership or La Liga or, or Serie A. You know, it feels like it's you know like practice games. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, I think some of the players really really have the same. You know, feeling illusion that I have. Yeah, one player you know well from your time here at the club, um, Scott Brown, captain, been there. You know, throughout your time, throughout several managers and coaching teams, he's come in for a wee bit of criticism this year. Well, he, he always comes in for some form of criticism throughout his time, and he's always rose above it. But this year in particular, a wee bit of criticism. How important do you think he still is as a player 
uh, for Celtic in this 10 in a row season? Uh, very, very. Uh, I I do because I know I, I'm 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 a big big fan of Scott Brown. Uh, I think he's got a lot to give still. He is, you know, he is the one breaking up the play in midfield. You can see that, you know, especially domestically, when when Celtic are going to go forward, they are, they are sometimes a wee bit too open defensively. And, and I think Brown is the best man to, to break up play. And he's a big, big leader in the dressing room, on the pitch. And this team, I don't see too many recognized leaders yeah. on the pitch. And I think that's going to be important in a in in a season like this, which can we see where, where they can make history. Yeah. Do you think it is still important? Say Scott isn't having the greatest game or going through the best period. Do you think it's still worthwhile playing him just for that uh, that case that you just put there? There's isn't too many natural leaders. Is it worth having him on the pitch yeah. regardless? Uh, oh, uh, that, that's a trick question in a way. Uh, Obviously, if he's going to obviously uh, lose his form and not not perform as well as he as he usually do, then 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 Neil's got something to think about. But I think he's been right to to really back his his skipper because of the reason that there is not that too many leaders there. Uh, and and I still think though that that that. You 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 will rest him now and then. He, he doesn't play for Scotland anymore, which gave him time, and he's one of the fittest players around. Yeah, yeah, and then talking about rested players, I mean, we we saw at the weekend that Neil came out and said that you know Edson Edward had a, a spell out the team, and Shane Duffy, of course, um, he says he's played a lot of games and he was he was taking out the team for that purpose. What do you make of uh, uh, his contribution so far, and was it? Was it the correct decision on Sunday to either rest him or or leave him at the team? Yeah, uh, I mean they won the game. Uh, they uh, didn't struggle too much defensively. I think they were quite solid. I think Sean Duffy is it, definitely has got a lot of qualities as as a defensive leader and, and center half. He's great in the air. He's physically strong, but sometimes domestically. The game won't suit him because Shane will be at his best when they sit a little bit deeper. Yeah. Uh, and domestically, Celtic will have the bulk of possession. They will go forward a lot, uh, and that's the trick thing. And you know this, Willow. That uh, as a defender for Celtic, you are supposed to uh, be attack-minded to a certain degree, but your job is to make sure you're on your toes when. Uh, the counterattacks are coming, and and obviously I speak more about the games domestically than the European league. Yeah, no, totally agree with you, Johan. Um, well, back back to Neil. I mean, he's endured a difficult few weeks to say the least. Um, like you know, the pressures he's under. I, I caught a glimpse of from the plane side seeing you guys work. Um, you know, incredible pressure on you at that time as well. You know, it's been heightened with the ten in a row season. Um, I mean, give us give us a glimpse of how he deals with that, the demands of the job every day, you know, and how you think he'll be dealing with it at this time. Yeah, I have to. Even I w- was impressed by him the last time. Obviously, when I worked with him, uh, because he's been through a lot, you know, uh, during not only his playing career but even his management career uh, at Celtic, but. Of course, I feel sympathy about it because he is under enormous pressure. He's got a heavy, heavy workload. But on the other hand, there is no other place Neil Lennon would love to be. He breeds Celtic. He breeds football. So I think he loves this challenge. I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. no he, he can make yeah. history. He's got to get a song here. I've got <laughs> no. Look, I, I totally agree with you. I think Neil loves the pressure and and everything that this season will bring. Um, and you can see in some of his interviews how he, 
you know, his back has got up and had a, a bite back. You know, a lot of, some of the criticism, you know, that I've heard on social media and other outlets as well is a nil tactically. Now, I've been there, I've, I've defended him because I was there on the pitch when he worked tactically with, with you as well. I mean, gives a glimpse of what he's like on the pitch, on the training pitch, because a lot of people are saying, it, it, you know, he isn't interested in that side. But he clearly is, so you're probably the guy to, to give an insight in that. Uh, I, I think he, uh, he works more tactically now than he used to be. Uh, 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 I think uh, he knows that today's generation, they need really need, need to be pinpointed what to do because they don't want any responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know that. No, but... You, it's not criticism, it's just the way it is. Uh, they really need to be known and told exactly what to do. And I think that's something that uh, is a bit new to Neil. By, by lunch, he takes it on because he's certainly not a dinosaur. So, uh, it, and tactically, after the years I spent with him, he was spot on. He had a lot of great ideas which he didn't always use, but he was great during games, you know, to, to pinpoint, we need to change this defensively or attack-wise. Yeah. Are you still in touch with you, Johan? You still still keeping regular touch? Uh, not as much as I should do. No, no. Uh, but that's more down to uh, me being allergic to phones. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, okay, uh, back on the phone, big man. I mean, being uh, very busy. Yeah, well, listen. Some people, uh, you know, I've heard some people say that they'd love to see you back at the club alongside them. You know, they recognise the success that the two of you's had. Um, I think and people think, yeah, uh, people think that managers. Well, it's well known that managers go with their number two everywhere. I mean, if you you get asked to go back, would you? Would that appeal to you? Do you miss the buzz of the club? Do you miss everything that brings the pressures uh, as well? Yeah, of course I miss the buzz and working for one of the finest clubs in the world. Uh, I miss the competitive edge of it. But I think Neil is quite happy with his backroom stuff, to be honest with you. And, and uh, he, But he knows what I would bring. He knows what I stand for. So... We might work together in the future. You never know. Yeah. Well, you, oh, listen, you were a formidable partnership. Yeah. I told the story last week, I think it was, yeah. when the two years locked me in a dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was an interesting afternoon for myself. So I, 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 can, uh, I can bear witness to the power that you he's have in a dressing room. Look, back in the team, you know, positive. They're in the verge of a quadruple treble, you know, just the Scottish Cup final to negotiate. Like how special achievement is that? You played in some some really good Celtic teams, some of the best. You know, yeah. you 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 were part of the coaching team with another successful side, but this is something special, is it not? It is. It is. Uh, we can't kid ourselves. Uh, I think obviously nine in a row is fantastic. They they might and hopefully will make history with ten in a row, but more impressive. For me, it's eight finals on the trot. Yeah. You know, winning leagues, the best teams usually do. But sometimes you lose concentrations in one or two cup games or whatever, and, and, and you lose one game. But being now in the eight, eight it's, final it's, it's on the trot, games. for me, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Incredible achievement. Well, here's hoping yeah. they can complete the quadruple treble and yeah. we can crack into the gym for you and Frank yes. to celebrate, Johan. Again. But thanks very much, we will. Johan. We will, Frank. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us, Johan. It was, thanks, a, Johan. it was great seeing you and wish you all the best with your recovery with that hernia. Cheers, big man. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. thanks. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Guys, well, what a brilliant interview that was. Big Johan Mialbi. I mean, a guy who really knows what it's like to, yeah. to be there with, with Neil Lennon on the touchline, knows the pressures, you know, says a couple of interesting points here. You know, um, uh, uh, what do you make his point when when we're chatting about the pressures uh, when and under, you know, the players' um, performances? Uh, we asked him, did the players owe the manager mm. a big performance? He was saying about the coaching players need, 
need to be taken by the hand now. Um, it's, it's a new thing for me. Um, but I, I didn't get it all. I mean, I've spoke to you, you guys before about it. I mean, I spoke to you, you, you were manager, but the, the fact that they do shape now and you've got, you've got to tell players where to play, I mean, I, I, my day. <laughs> my manager would have said, "What? Well, you're a right back. If you don't know where to play, what am I buying you for? You know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's, they don't swap about. They do that, they tend to do that now. A left winger plays right and all that kind of stuff. And mm. you used to just buy a player for where they were great at and play them in that position. So it's all changed now, you know. I think I, I, I'm a wee bit understanding about the, the, the full backs because they're more like wingers now. Yeah. Now, if that's Lenny wanting to play them up front, um, then fine, you know. But you know, that, that's just a certain thing. You've got to say to them, but first and foremost, you're a defender. Mm. You know, don't forget. Especially the boy Frim Frimpong, but we've, we've touched on him before. Great going forward, but he's got to learn to defend more. Yeah. Um, so uh, he'll learn. He'll learn off it. But uh, I think when you get him and <laughs> and Lexa and the team, they're not the biggest in the world. So I would think, you know, he's got he's got his sort of sort that out because free kicks were losing goals. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. And he said there that Neil he knows him personally. He knows yeah. him very well. He says that Neil would would be nowhere else in the world mm -hmm. than here. I, th I think he, I think that's a given, you know. I think his love for the club and everything he's did for for Celtic over the years that's a, a total given. And and it's the same with the players. It's a great opportunity this year to get make history, you know, on ten in a row uh, from from Neil right down to the players. But just touching on what Mac is saying there, I think you said a couple of weeks ago back in the day, if somebody wasn't doing it, you know, you'd be over there helping them out or giving them yeah. a G up. Yeah. And I think that's what Johan's touched on there with, with Bruni and the team. Yeah. Uh, regardless of, you know, if he's not at the top of his form, he's he's very influential in there, and he'll make sure everybody on the bottom is on their on their toes. Yeah. And I don't think out with him, they don't they have that kind of leadership. Well, so that, aye, that was cameras, a good point. The cameras went in. It's the weekend. I was going to touch on it. The cameras went in the mother game before it for the huddle. I mean, a great huddle podcast. But they went in. The, the cameras actually went in. I'll tell you what, he was talking, and the way he was talking, it inspired me. Yeah. You know, and if these boys don't get that for the captain, then it's yeah. such an important I role think so. to play. I think he so. has. It was a good. Up, it was know? a good point he made with natural mm -hmm. leaders in the team. Now yes. we, we know Callum McGregor's is taking that mantle on a bit, mm -hmm. um, and we touched on Shane Duffy, who everyone thought would be that, and and Big Johan, you know, asking him about. He played that position yeah. successfully for Celtic for years. Yeah. It's interesting to hear his his comments on, on, you know. The way Duffy's playing domestically yeah. and what he needs to do because, big, as I say, there's no no better insight than a, a guy who's played at that yeah. level. But big, I thought Big John would have sorted the defence out. I thought he would yeah. be because he's, a, he's a, he was a centre half, you know, and he, you know, and unfortunately because of injury, but he was going to be a damn good one. Mm. Um, but it looks at so I thought he could have sorted the defence. I don't know whether he does it or not. I don't know. I mean, I've not got insight. I don't think. I, I don't think it's it's. You know, you can pigeonhole John Kennedy as a defensive no, no, coach. I, like I don't a, mean that, but you'd have thought like, if, if Johan was there, he'd have had when back Johan, four. When Johan was there, I, I'll tell you, I, when Johan That's was there, I, mean. I wish I would have said to him, he took us every Thursday, mm -hmm. every Thursday, Defense, they, yeah. the group would split. Yeah. Yeah. And what would happen is Neil would take all the attacking and the midfielders and Johan would take the back four yeah. And the ones who are left over, and yeah. we just used to run waves of attack, yeah. back four waves yeah. of attack, overload it, waves of attack, really get it. some young boys in, and just run at us. Yeah. And then you know he would go at the halfway line, yeah. he would he would start for dead ball situations, yeah. he would you know punt a few in the yeah. air just so we were getting our movements right. Yeah. And I think it helped think us. It, of course, it helps you. That's what you can see what Rangers are doing. When I'm in England, the first thing they done, I, I couldn't believe it. They split them into three. Mm -hmm. You know, the midfield players go away. And work and the defence went away and work. Makes sense though, doesn't it? And it makes it. I mean, the strikers went away. We went with the goalkeepers, you know, yeah, and, and yeah. we just done with crossovers. Glad you said the goalkeepers, yeah. I thought you were going to say, yeah. And then the boozer. But that's what we've done. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it because in Scotland we didn't do that, you know. Yeah. Everyone worked together. It was the same training yeah. and, and, and it was it was an eye opener for me. And, it, yeah, and yeah, it's true because, you know, you try, because I played midfield and then I went up front. Mm. But if you try to put me back in the midfield, it's a different game now. Different you know, game, and yeah. You've got. You, I was so used to it when I played for Sydney in the midfield, but then when I'm not front, I'm so used to making any kind of runs and you know more twenty yards rather than long busters like sixty, seventy yards. Yeah. You know, for box to box, so it's a different game. Yeah, but um, yeah. yeah, it's a good idea. I think you've got to get somebody to work on 
a different aspect. You can see that Rangers have done it. I yeah. Mean, you can oh, you see can the see with their movements yeah. and things. And uh, listen, it was great having the big man on because I was part yes. of what he did. So no, brilliant, brilliant yep. to speak to him, and uh, we wish him all the best. Yes. Yep. Right guys, let's have a wee bit of fun uh, Murdo's just been in touch and he's looking forward to playing this To get to, on, sleep, but, <laughs> get to sleep tonight So let's liven it up Fun, wee bit of uh, Some memories of our times abroad And our funniest right. trips <laughs> Now, Frank, you yeah. must have some That are I can't, can't on podcasts can't. <laughs> Well podcasts, you can say what you want That's no, the beauty of podcasts, it's not really, live no, I'm, I'm happily in a relationship <laughs> <laughs> What kind of I European nation you be? I know. Right, no so, wonder so you're one of the successful in Europe. We were always good. Anyway, no, no the one that I'm going to talk about is we, we played Honved, um, over in Honved. I uh, Budapest. 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 Hungary, yeah, Hungary. Budapest. Good team. Good team at the time. Anyway, we went over there. Big bully, God rest them. The gaffer sent Mick Jackson, one of his pals, to go and scout and get information. Now, obviously, Mick likes a few beers, so he's over there. He's obviously been over there and. I forgot to go to the game or something, you know, because what he told, <laughs> he's to to what game. he's told us was totally wrong. He's saying this team, the gaffers going right, we've been told this team don't push it, they don't hit the ball over the top, never hit the ball. Everything's trying to come through. So big Mike, we've got big Mike, a bit like you know, I see Shane Duffy. He's a bit, you know, he's not the quickest in the ball, but strong and Aye. and he doesn't like sort of a pushing out to the halfway line that we're talking about. So <laughs> all week we've worked on it, push out, push out, push out. Game started well, you know, <laughs> believe it. The first pass, <laughs> ping, right out of the <laughs> So we had to a turn, you know what defenders are like, they don't like running towards right. their own goal. And that happened three times in a row. Well, Big Mick is screaming at the gaffer, you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Mick Jackson's on the stand for this. Aiden, <laughs> still <laughs> nursing his hangover <laughs> for the <laughs> European <laughs> trap. <laughs> so that was it. We could beat 1 0 over there. Beat 1 0, did you say? Beat 1 0, and we had to bring him back to Celtic Park. And it was uh, the manager was banging it. Banging the boards and all that. Aye. The magnets kept falling off. Now I'm killing myself laughing as you, you know me. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You must have been a delight we're, to we're, be in the dressing room. I'm playing against nobody. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm not playing against anybody. Defence is filling the bin. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Imagine that, having the dressing room. So that was it. That was it. And uh, Big Billy got me off his head. And basically, one of his team talks was uh, if you don't take four off this mob, He's all going to uh, George Square and burn your arses. <laughs> so, so we took four off him. Uh, how good. scouting has changed uh, these oh, days, the it modern probably, man. It helps, if you, it helps if you take the game, isn't it? Exactly. It helps if you actually uh, take the game. He obviously in. didn't have a clue, because this mob are just pinging it right. Now they just look up videos, don't they? But uh, these days all I. went, they went to games and wee trips. and That's what I might get into, you know, know. scouting. Uh, you just look up the videos and I then... I know, you don't go anywhere, it's in the room. Get smashed the rest, of the, <laughs> rest of the week Especially over at Obrish You've seen the, the room that they've got At Lennox Town It's incredible Aye. some of the stuff They just press a name Put a name into it And it just brings it up It's I know. incredible Not like your man You know no. but Do you know what but The big thing for me You never you never see a bad video of somebody do you no, no, no. Uh, I had a few good ones in myself. That I thought that's a whole Always a bit of what, uh, what, about, what about you, sir? You must have. I mean, <laughs> nothing, no, nothing like that. I mean, pff, I never really liked going away in European nights. It was, uh, I liked the home games, but we went to Georgia. We we played uh, Dynamo Batumi, and I don't know. You might be too. Too young for this. Never heard of them. Are these teams still Dynamo Batum are still going? I used to be Mr. Beau. Georgia. <laughs> the Black Sea. The Black Sea. Right, okay. But uh Matthew, you remember the Golden Child, eh? I remember the that, Golden yes. Child. So Eddie, Eddie Murphy. You remember, aye, aye, Eddie Murphy, Murphy. I remember it. And they're on the plane and it's all the cigarette smoke and the big leather right, seats. Right. That was what we flew out to between me and honest to God. And I'm not the best of flyers. <laughs> and you're thinking, how's this thing gonna get up and get us over there? But we got over there and it was poverty stricken. I mean, it was Georgia, Aye. but the bus to the hotel, there was cows <laughs> on the street stuff, and you had been held up with cows. And no, and I was telling my boy this, and he's thinking to me, uh, is this what European nights are all about? It's a bit glamorous, aye. And I roomed, with, I roomed with Phil. We, we roomed Aye. in, we slept in the tracksuits. Never took the tracksuits off for the whole Why? time we were there, because the place was bogging. It was, the rooms were I know, but we, <laughs> unbelievably we used to bad. Away, we used to the hotel, we had, we had two armed security on reception in case anybody came into the hotel Aye. it was mental mate he slept with one eye open but as, as I say we had the, the trackies on for the He's whole on. time we were there <laughs> then we, we actually got a decent result but Aye. it was European 
That would be like on a Thursday and then we'd be uh. back to play on a Saturday. You'd be knackered. Oh, I know. That, that was, was the Cup Winners' Cup. Oh, ah, the we Cup done that when, I was in, when we were in the Hornved, you know, you're in, you're in bed in the afternoon and in the hotel, but it wasn't like today, you know, it was a, like a travel lodge or something like that, you know. Uh. <laughs> and, we're in, we're in, and I'll never forget, that's where there was a song they brought out about me called uh, Machiavelli. It was like the... Okay, okay, and they were all doing it up and down the street, and we'd be at the hotel, and I'm like that, looking at the window. <laughs> with the hot fed supporters on the cell. They're all doing this conga up and down the street. It was brilliant. It was, it was really good. Ah, really jeez. So speaking about flying, well, my time. The funniest things that always seem to happen when we were flying. We had a group that were just clowns, mm-hmm. <laughs> and their yeah. squads throughout the years. I remember flying back through. Uh, what was that? Actually, that wasn't even Europe, but it was Australia, and we were flying first class. All right, so we had the big beds on Singapore Airlines. Other other airlines <coughs> are available, yes, but yeah. not as good as them. But uh, and the security, head of security at the time, was uh, he was fond of the red wine. I don't know if he's still at the cup just now, so I'll no name him. But he was uh, so he gets <laughs> a few a few wines in him, and he's gone round all the boys, and we're all having a laugh. And he was a great guy, and he. <laughs> Some sleeping tablets, <laughs> and he's chatting up the air hostess, and you know, <laughs> giving her a wee bit, and uh, this, that, the next thing, falls asleep, doesn't he, with a r- big red wine myth. Oh. So Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> Charlie Mulgrew, Paddy McCourt gets a gets a sharpie pen, <laughs> <laughs> and they go up to him and test him at first. They give him a wee shake, and he's uh, he's right, out cold. Good. So they test him again, put the sharpie pen on his head, and he's right. baldy. Right. <laughs> oh. Nothing. Before you know it, oh, they're, they're taking the pen and they're scribbling things into his face. They draw a big <laughs> moustache around him. They write on his head, <laughs> shags on tour, <laughs> on his forehead, <laughs> and big careful letters. <laughs> and they go back to sit, so we are all oh. killing ourselves in this. So, of course, he wakes up about an hour later with all this on his face, up to the toilet, oh. chatting away to the air hostess again. <laughs> you think he's a man? <laughs> the air hostess is looking at him going, has no idea, oh, goes back, sits brilliant. in his seat. Must have been in his seat for about 20 minutes just sitting there with shags on tour, with a moustache, <laughs> with a big red one. <laughs> But uh, it was unbelievable. Oh God! Another man in the plane as well. Where the doctor, uh, the doctor had had fell asleep, and somebody had got a hold of his passport. <laughs> Don't know how it, the inside his pocket. I think it was Chris Killen, maybe Chris Killen, Scott Brown. I think and cut cut out a, a newspaper, <laughs> a wee picture in a newspaper, is somebody and stuck so it in his passport, <laughs> put it back in his pocket. So we're all waiting at passport Brilliant. control. That was a European uh, game. I think it might it might have been Alberg or something. And uh, he goes to passport control, <laughs> opens his passport, the guy's looking at it. <laughs> so it's, the, it's, it's a cut out of something in the newspaper. Oh, oh it was, that was great. European trips were brilliant. Hey, do you yeah. remember Stevie Walford? That Aye. Was assistant Aye. manager with, with Martin. We, he played with me at West Ham. And we were going on a t- trip to, to Holland. And he, he, on the way back, obviously, we had a couple of trip drinks after the tournament and all that. And we're coming back. Well, Wally uh, said he'd take a panic attack. On a plane, <laughs> and we're all jumping and talking because he went to open the door. <laughs> well, oh, you, you're 20, 29,000 feet, you think it's a joke, and then you go, What? Is Aye, he was he going at it? You were all hopping and talking, restraining him, like not, con air. I could not stop laughing. You know, all the boys are sitting there panicking. I, I've got tears around in my face because <laughs> I, I crucified it. Honestly, I taunted it. I horror the stuff I'd said to him for years after that. You know, oh, you God, know, no wonder. Aye, I, I probably I mean, to the jump. Can't beat the I European know. trips away when you're away with the boys. But yeah. right, guys. Um, I mean, finally, big game away for Celtic. Big game coming up on Thursday night yes. for Scotland against Serbia. Um, you both know what it's like to play in massive games for your country. How would the lads be feeling just now? A couple of days out. I think you know. I, th- I think some of the boys that have done well for us and played in these games will feel a bit <laughs> because the big guns are back, aren't they? I know the big boys are back and, and there will be... You think they'll just come straight in? I think so. Ah, he's got to, you know, Christy think, back in, Tierney. Uh, Christy, Tierney, Robertson come back. He's, you know, um, I think they'll do. Huh? I think the boys will come back in. I, I, listen, you've got to play your best team. Uh, I don't know whether they'll beat Serbia, but... Um, it's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. It's, but it's a great, it's, hey, it's a great it's a opportunity. Great, it's a great opportunity. Listen, one listen, game. Listen, FIFA and everyone 
They've made up these wee bloody tournaments for us to get there. So <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we can have <laughs> Hopefully we can get there, you know. And hopefully will, the fans will uh, be back because that's what, that's what the fans, that's what Scotland fans make it when they go away in these trips. And yeah. It's brilliant. I mean, you you played with Steve Clark, former yes. teammate of yours. What was he like? Great guy. Was, is he? Yeah, he was a great, you know what? He's not I, a, I don't know why he says that's a surprise, is he? He can't be any other than that when oh, it's my squad. But yeah, he was good. Steve, he was good. You could tell he was, good. He was a good player. He was a, he was a decent player. Knows his stuff. Yeah, he likes a laugh, you know. I seen him doing Hearts and Golf Day last year, and he was, you know, and I've seen him cut teeth for it, but he's just laughing and macking. He was just, he's just, right. he's one of them. He's, you know, he's, well, he's here's good, what he has on Thursday night. But he, he wants to keep a clean sheet and then yeah. nick it one nil. Wouldn't that? There's nothing wrong with that, you know. He's learned off the best. Mourinho, it was at West Ham as well. I've told you before some of his exercises he was doing. The boys didn't ever seen. They've never seen it before. Yeah, and for. Players that's been in the game for a long time, that's a big that's, thing. That's so, tough to do. So uh-huh. the, the, the boys will enjoy training, that's for sure. Yeah, the Celtic players involved, you know, big part to play. Cal McGregor, Ryan Christie, Lee Griffiths, Greg Taylor might have a part to play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's a chance to become you Scotland would, legends, isn't you it? You wouldn't back against Griffiths mm-hmm. coming off the bench? Coming off the bench. Yeah, scoring, no. would you? He's still our best striker for me. Do you could say something to Chris? Something? Yeah, I think <laughs> he'd be. Uh, I, think start. Uh, I think he should start the game. Where Ryan Fraser been you up? You know something, I would start him, but again, I'm no advantage of knowing what fit. He's no starting for Celtic. I would be starting him for Celtic as well. But I know he joined up early, didn't he, with a, the squad and, and done an extra training just session? Just be surprised maybe Stevie, if he maybe Stevie wanted him to go early just to have a look at him. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of thing Stevie would do. Why don't you come early and let's have a look at you and see? Because it, it, it must be in his thoughts. You know, yeah. it must be in his thoughts because you get a ball to him in the box. But I think he'll play. You know, Dykes has done well. I think he's done. He's done very well. Yeah. There's, a, there's a few strikers in there that, you know, I think they've got five now. But I we, think we really need a Machiavelli go against <laughs> Australia, don't we? I won it. Yeah. Gets, one get, of the ones. Well, I'd rather have scored with David Griffiths against England, but that'd have been even nicer. But never mind. <laughs> 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 well, that get, ties get it. Aye, that ties us up nicely, guys. That was a cracker. Thanks for joining us uh, once again, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening on the Celtic Cuddle Podcast, and we'll be back again next week. <laughs>